Yo, what's up? This is the Jay the Nest podcast for June <laughs> 2021. This is one podcast for the entire month of June for the year 2021. It was a crazy month, a lot of life changes, uh, predominantly good stuff. Um, just been really busy with this move, but it's done. Settled into our new home. Hold on a sec. And it's the last day of June and it's 8 o'clock at night. Just finished watching uh, game two of the Stanley Cup final. I'm not really a massive hockey fan or anything, but I live in a hockey town now. I live in Las Vegas, so might get into them. They're the same colors as my school I graduated from. Um, I don't like using the expression alma mater. It's kind of kind of corny um but because the florida team is in the final um of course i'm naturally going to go towards them so go lightning um what else um yeah it's also the last day of the fiscal year of my company and you know you know sales goals and finishing stuff out and everything and um while i hadn't i had a really good june and uh, some of the stuff I did this month is going to lead to a probably even better July. Um, I didn't 100% get to where I wanted to be, but um, all everything else considered, it was a really good month. I have a couple of podcast clips from earlier in the month. I haven't really been podcasting a whole lot during like the middle towards the end of the month, but there's going to be some other clips from the towards the beginning of the month, and then the rest of this podcast will just be from. Uh, today, but long story short, the move was a success. Uh, we're finally in Las Vegas. My wife's going to law school, so we're gonna chill the fuck out for June and part of August, not June, uh, July and part of August and just enjoy ourselves. Um, I've afforded myself some time to where I could just take a breath, not stress too much about prospecting new business or anything. Um, and just enjoy my new big screen TV entertainment center. The whole setup of the new house is fantastic. No more split level house. No more having to go up and down stairs for every little thing anymore. It's all it's all single story. Got a nice master bedroom. Got a nice guest room that doubles as my wife's office. And I have an entire room to myself that doubles as my childhood <laughs> And my office. All my adult shit in there is in there. My business stuff is in there, but also so is my childhood stuff. Like my collectibles, my vintage video games, some collectibles, uh, all my music. I got a nice desk with a nice setup to where instead of having to run down to the basement to do studio or podcasting or video stuff, all I have to do is turn my chair 90 degrees and there's my personal laptop that has my entire setup. My new desk has... Enough, enough space for my speakers, my printer, my entire workstation, uh, my phone. I have a landline now. So it's uh, fucking awesome. I've spent the last week and a half, because we, we moved down last Monday. We spent the better part of that week assembling a bunch of furniture, putting things together, uh, drilling shit into walls, painting. And um, yeah, I've just been really motivated and determined to just get the house which was already mostly move-in ready but just making it ours like really giving it our personal personality (laughs) and um yeah just really getting settled in so we've been watching loki uh really been enjoying that show we're totally caught up on the marvel cinematic universe watched every single thing over these last few months, watched WandaVision, watched uh, uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, and yeah, just really been enjoying it. It's nice to be down here in Vegas because we finally live near some uh, immediate family and kind of have a nice support system here. Been dealing with a little little bit of a heat wave, not as intense as what the people in the Pacific Northwest are dealing with, but you know, still not fun. Um, now that we live in a metropolis again, I've been saying for a while um, that 
Las Vegas, at least the part that we live in right now, reminds me very much of Orlando. So I feel a little bit more at home right now. I missed living in a metropolis. I've said that I'm in the middle where I never want to live out in the middle of a rural area. I never want to live out in the middle of nowhere. It's just, no, I can't. Um, I wouldn't mind having a property somewhere else that's out in the middle of nowhere, knowing that I have a stockpile of groceries and whatever else, knowing that I don't have to go shopping every other day. Um, But living somewhere where you have to make a day out of doing your daily errands just sounds like a nightmare to me. (laughs) I get it, though. There's the peace and quiet. But whatever, that's that's not the most appealing thing to me. Um, I would never want to do that, but I'd never want to live like right in the middle of the city, like a like in an apartment right in the middle of the city. I'd rather live in the suburbs or urban adjacent, suburb adjacent. Um, and that's kind of where we're at right now, where we're within striking distance of the airport, the university. Um, and yeah, pretty much everything I need is either less than 10 minutes away or less than 20 minutes away. So again, very reminiscent of Orlando, a lot of diversity here, a lot of things that I need that are closer than when I was, uh, living in our last place. So I'm excited about it. Let's see. So now that we're finally getting settled in, I can continue to work on beating uh, Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles. That's the game that I've been playing a little bit over the past week. Um, I still need to finish Village. Not the the story, but um, the mercenaries. But I do need to play Shadows of... uh, Village of Shadows difficulty, because as soon as I got to a mercenaries difficulty where the... uh, difficulty spiked, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> um, I forgot how intense Resident, sometimes I forget how intense Resident Evil games are when you play them on the highest difficulty, so I've realized that when I say shit like, oh yeah, a lot of these modern horror games really aren't that scary. Uh, they get scarier once you play them on a harder difficulty. They get more intense, for sure. Um, but I had also bought for the PS3 um, among a few other games uh, what did I get? I think I got... What was it? Dino Crisis? I got Final Fantasy VI. So some retro-ass games. Um, but I also got... This little collection of... They're supposed to be, like, motion sensor rail shooters where you use a motion sensor control to control the, uh, the target or the aiming receptacle of the gun. Um, but I just didn't do that. I, I bought it where you use the joystick... For the PS3, I bought the combo of Umbrella and Darkside Chronicles. Two separate games that came out, I think, in the mid to late 2000s that kind of fill in the gaps between the stories of most of the Resident, original Resident Evil games. So I'm playing Umbrella Chronicles now. I'm on the chapter that really goes through most of Resident Evil Zero. So we'll see what happens next. I'm excited to get to the Darkside Chronicles because that starts to fill in the gaps between of what happened... I think between Resident Evil 3 and 4, the backstory of Leon and Krauser, which I'm excited to see more of. Um, So that's what I've been working on, if you want to call that work. Oh, fuck. I'm getting used to being in an area that's a lot more busy now. So we are still taking the pandemic uh, pretty seriously. Again, it's going to take some time to ease out of that, but we could certainly ease out of it a lot quicker if more people got vaccinated and quit being assholes. Uh, You know what? I was going to save this for the next clip, but I think I can succinctly put it at the end of this one. I have an idea of how to get more people vaccinated quicker. Give me a second. Okay, so I'm going to say this as succinctly as I can. Would President Joe Biden... Joey B, Joe Bob, uh, Robinette (laughs) needs to do is he needs to walk up to that podium, put his presidential PUD right out there, right on it, and just say, I can't do a Biden impersonation, sorry. Um, He needs to say, look, 
we have this massive supply. We no longer have a supply issue with the vaccine. Now it's a demand issue. Most of the people that have wanted these vaccines have gotten them. Many of them got them a while back. But the vaccination rate has really dropped quite a bit as of late. And it's really throwing off my goals here. Most importantly, the well-being of this country. You know, getting the herd immunity, stuff like that. You ever notice that the places that have the highest vaccination rates have had the biggest drops in cases and lower mortality, lower hospitalizations, lower severe cases? And meanwhile, we're seeing spikes of this variant in all these uh, Trump-supporting states that uh, have low rates because they've been brainwashed into thinking, thinking that science is a farce. Anyway... Since the demand has gone down, my American people, and a lot of these batches, a lot of these people who have, uh, a lot of these pharmacies and other places that are housing all these have uh, doses that are going to be expiring soon, probably in about six weeks. We need to send, we're going to send them out to people who desperately need them. We've already started sending them out to other countries, but why not take our existing stockpile since nobody here wants them? And I'm going to send them out. So he does that. He lets the backlash happen because obviously people want what they can't have. It's a psychological trick. So he threatens to take them away, receives the backlash for two days. And then he comes back out and says, all right, I've noticed that there's been some backlash to my bold announcement, but I thought you guys didn't want them, but apparently you do. So now because they're still going bad in six weeks and we need people to use them in other parts of the world, I'm giving you two weeks to go to your local pharmacy or wherever does walk-ins. And if enough people do it, we'll be that much closer to herd immunity and we don't have to worry about rescinding anything. So it's completely a psychological trick. I think if executed properly, this idea would actually work really well. I feel really good about it. I think it's actually brilliant. If you're listening to this podcast and you plan on taking it, you better give me some cred or some royalties or I'm going to be pissed! Yo, what's up? This is still the podcast for June 2021 for the whole month. Um, this will probably be a longer podcast. I actually saw that I did more clips than I thought I did. So enjoy a nice big long podcast here. Um, I think I just want to use this clip real quick to um, mention beyond everything that I did um, in the prior clip that... Now that we're settling into our new home and I got my new setup and it's mostly organized, mostly coming along, still have some clutter to deal with and need to figure out a place to put my shoes. <laughs> um, throughout the month of June, I did work on some new ranked and reviewed videos. So if I haven't already, I will tease them here and just expect to see a lot more content in July. You're probably going to see at least three to four ranked and reviewed videos. Um, going to be doing Bring Me the Horizon, which it's already done. I just need to make the video, but I've already done the commentary. I've already done the ranking for Blink-182. I just need to actually make the commentary and um, make the video. But like actually going through and listening to these bands' discographies, it's been done, and I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty set on the uh, the the ranking. Um, the next band I might work on is uh, Green Day, which they have a lot of albums, but a lot of them are short. So, you know, they're one of the bands that inspired me to pick up guitar, and they have a lot of albums. So, may as well do that one, and then. Um, we're getting back into the heavy metal area realm. Um, even if a lot of their material sounds similar, I kind of want to see Lamb of God and their eight albums. So it's probably going to be in that order. Remember the Horizon, Blink-182, Green Day, Lamb of God. Those will be the probably the next four that I do. At least the first two are accurate because I've already done the rankings. Um, but... I know content's been a little slow the past month. I've been moving. I've been getting things taken care of. But now that we're in a much uh, better place and I feel a lot more productive knowing that I could pause my work and literally just p 
pivot 90 degrees and work on my personal, my media, my music, uh, stuff like that. So just if you're already subscribed and you listen to this stuff, thank you very much. Otherwise, feel free to check out the rest of my YouTube channel. There's going to be a lot more content coming up. I have everything that I need all in one space. I don't have to run around a big ass house anymore, which I know sounds like a privilege. It was, it was a nice house, but it was very not conducive for a productive space compared to what we have now. Love our new house. We'll get settled in, be putting up some videos, not just ranked and reviewed, but I'll also probably be doing more guitar stuff. Of course, now that my whole setup is together, I'll be working on Raptor Riot again. And now that my company's fiscal year is restarting, I kind of can take a breath, enjoy the great amount of money that I made this last month, um, and maybe like take a week off or something. <laughs> play some Resident Evil, play some guitar, play some everything. I, I work from home, so I have full freedom to go about my life how I please, and I really enjoy it. The trade-off, of course, is that I'm in an all-commission career. You know, having a couple of slow months can be scary if you don't have a massive savings account to sit on, but, like, with the way our system is set up with certain things being able to uh, bankrupt you pretty quickly, um, I would rather have a strong sense of consistency where instead of having a massive month every few months, I'd rather have more consistent, solid months so that when a slow month or two happens. And when I say slow, I mean like with things closing, there's still activity happening, but sometimes it might take some time to push business through and get that close and get that commission, you know? Um, but what happens if this stuff doesn't close and the commission doesn't happen, then that big month you were banking on, uh, doesn't <laughs> happen. But I mean, it's kind of statistic because like if the, the, those couple months that were slow, those might've been all the statistically likely things to not go through and a couple months later all the other seeds you've planted have actually statistically borne fruit will will bear fruit sorry if i said that wrong but um compared to this past year and compared to these past couple of months where i've just been transitioning um my intent is to talk to significantly more people more consistently um starting next week which will, you know, I do the calendar week, Sunday to Saturday, uh, be July 4th. Um, it's a perfect, uh, four, it's a perfect 28 days where it's four weeks of seven days where it ends on a Sunday and then July 31st is a Saturday. So it's a perfect symmetrical four weeks. Um, that doesn't really matter, but you know, to somebody like me, I think it's kind of cool. I'm going to restart my 12 week year with my tracking um, I know technically the second quarter started today, but for like calendar and 12 week year purposes, I'm, bas I'm basically starting my next quarter, um, next week. Doesn't mean I'm not going to do anything these next couple days. Um, but with regards to tracking, I'm starting it next week because the 12 week year thing only takes like 28, it doesn't take full months into consideration. It's seven day weeks. So basically a a full month is 28 days regardless of when it started or what have you, or if you started it in the middle of the month or the middle of the week. Um, but working on getting back to the gym safely. Um, a lot of the things that I dropped the ball in the past year, I'm looking to uh, turn that around, get back on my meditation. Um, and yeah, of course, um, podcasting and putting videos up uh, more consistently. And I think that's going to happen because again, this particular space is more conducive to uh, creative energy, but also generally productive energy where I can single-handedly provide for my family while my wife goes to law school. From where I'm sitting, I can see my cat sitting on his cat tree. Got my bookshelf with all my personal and business books. Got some trophies up there. And by some trophies, I mean a trophy. <laughs> And then a couple of, like, 90s relics. Uh, and then there's another bookshelf next to it where it has all my classic video games, my CDs, my old magazines from my childhood, my old, again, classic games, second generation, PS2, GameCube, uh, PlayStation 1 games. So, like, when you walk into my office slash workspace, 
it might look a little overwhelming, but you can walk through it perfectly fine. It's not, I mean, it's still a little bit busy. I need to declutter it a little bit, but I got my three guitars out on an, on, out on a three guitar rack, which putting that thing together was a pain in the ass. Um, when you buy stuff that's like pre-drilled and you have to like pre-assemble, um, if the drill holes aren't lined up right and there's like mesh over them, it's a pain in the ass to like line everything up. Um, one sec. So yeah, I might do a video soon of my office setup just so you guys can get a glimpse into where all this new magic is going to happen. Of course, I'll have to make sure some personal stuff isn't seen. Um, <laughs> But at any rate, I could at least show you bits and pieces of my childhood. Um, trying to think what else here, what else is going on? Oh yeah, so I'm recording this final clip for June on um, Thursday morning. It's, it's actually July 1st right now. You know, after this one goes up, I'll try to get back on a weekly basis where I put them out on either Tuesdays or Wednesdays and then have some other sort of weekly video I put out, whether it's ranked and reviewed or polite commentary or something with Raptor Riot or just teasing some stuff, Life of Jay Dennis, some, some shit like that. Again, I have a shit ton of videos on my channel. You would think that I'd have like a bunch of subscribers, but I've been so inconsistent over the years that my content is scattered, um, but it is, it, it is at least organized into playlists. And somehow, even though over the past month I haven't uploaded anything, I still got a couple of subscribers. So I'm pretty close to, to uh, 200 subscribers now, which didn't anticipate ever having that many, so that's kind of cool. Um, but at any rate, now that my company's fiscal year is done, you know, I still ha have people I needed to talk to and have applications I need to take. It's just it's going to go into this year now and this month, which I'm excited about. Had a great month last month. This month's going to be awesome, too, and it's going to give us a nice running start into my wife's uh, law school career, <sighs> you know, being able to sit on a nice pile of money um, while I consistently generate more, but just knowing you have that big savings emergency fund, what have you, it just gives you a lot of peace of mind. I like to practice what I preach when it comes to financials. Um, but now that that's done, kind of working on tying up more loose ends on the personal and, you know, when you move, you have to fucking change your address on everything. You have to get things set up. Even though our house was mostly move-in ready, we had things we had to assemble, uh, some drilling, hanging things up. But now comes the other fun stuff, you know, changing the insurance, uh, taking advantage of shit on the home warranty, uh, making sure our animals are established with new vets here, and a couple of other things. So I'm going to do my best to kind of hit the ground running with that um, today and then try to end the week off on a, po a, a, a productive note so that maybe next week, or over the weekend, this weekend, um, I can just chill the fuck out. You know, maybe watch the new Resident Evil on Netflix, um, play Resident Evil Village or Umbrella Chronicles in my living room, where I have my new entertainment center and TV set up to where the PS3 and 4 and our Roku and um, my Wii, I have a Wii, uh, are set up. The Wii's not set up yet, but it's in the box. It's in the original box, and it's in perfectly fine condition. Um, I'm going to have to see if there's a classic game store or something nearby here. And just fucking enjoy my life, man. Like, just not be on the move all the time, not be doing stuff. But that's part of what was going on. It was all meant to yield a large, um, satisfactory payout, and so far it's doing it. So thanks for listening to this. That's basically it for... Um, June at the latest uh, enjoy the other clips that I put out throughout the month of June it's all in one long ass podcast I usually don't do these things monthly but this one will be and then we'll get back to our regularly programmed scheduling okay bye yo what's up it's uh, Monday June 7th in the morning about 7.40 7.40 in the morning um I don't remember. There was a radio show I, was, I used to listen to with my dad when I was a kid. And I just remember hearing like 7.40 in the morning or something like that. Or if that was like the radio station name. Did I just hit? I'm uh, just leaving Walmart. Was not as chaotic. 
Hold on, I'm gonna investigate. What is that? It's like a little piece of plastic. It's not like a it had a little bit of a little bit of, little bit of give to it. What are you? It's a little plastic ring or something. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm sure my tires can handle that. All right. Uh, excuse me about that. All right. So um. Yeah. So I've been uh, 30 for a few days now. And um, I'm generally feeling good about this month. Um, <laughs> kind of had a slip up yesterday, though, with my personal habits. And uh, I don't know, just feeling a little stressed out. You know, we're moving here in a couple weeks. You know, we saw our house. We love it. We're excited. Um, but there's a couple things I'm also trying to accomplish this month on a business level. And, you know, so that's the stress just gets to you. But doing my best to uh, stay sharp, get things done, get my house packed, make it so that it's a smooth move. It's just, you know, having a couple of animals with health issues and uh, a few other things. I know I'm being very vague on this podcast. It doesn't help. Um, my, my animals are okay. It's just, you know, they're, they're, they're not all in peak condition. We we rescued animals that happen to have some health problems. And sometimes it's a little bit stressful, but most of the time they are perfectly fine. Um, I think it's just the anxiety of, of the uh, pandemic. It's still waning. It's still slowly but surely waning, uh, wearing off. But I think people need to realize, as I've said before, and I'm not the first to say it, I won't be the last, but I, I like to think I'm on the cutting edge of these things, but, uh, I said that there's going to be a hangover from this. There's people that are going to be traumatized from having to be hyper careful for over a year. And now that things are getting a lot better, they're not just going to stop wearing a mask or, you know, hang out with everybody now that most people are vaccinated, depending on where you live. Um, At least where I live, it's at least at the national average. Um, In my particular town, cases are... I, I, I guess statistically zero. So over the weekend and over, over my birthday, you know, I saw more people, mostly vaccinated people, you know, went to a, a few small outdoor events. Um, and yeah, this week I'm going to be seeing a bunch of people, a bunch of clients uh, in person, like in their homes, but they're all vaccinated. So I got no issue with it. Um, but it's just, you know, you might look and look at somebody like me who, for good reason, took it more seriously and might have just talked about it a lot and hopefully won't need to talk about it much longer. Um, why I took it seriously, why I still continue to talk about it. You might look at somebody like me and go, why am I making it weird? It's not me. It's the people that are still refusing to get vaccinated for stupid reasons and are have been not taking it seriously for the majority of the time. You're the ones that are making it weird. Without being a sheep, I actually did the right thing and did the safe thing and did my part. So, to anoint myself with even more grandiosity, I was part of the solution, not the problem. (laughs) But anyway, um, so yeah, there's been a lot of anxiety, but a lot of it's been waning and I've just been looking to make this new decade of my life and this month as uh, great as possible. Um, and of course a huge part of that is fixing my brain. And what do I mean by that? I've talked about it before, but it bears repeating. We live in an overstimulated world right now where and I'm not just projecting my life onto everybody else. Like I know that other people talk about this and this is like a common cultural technological societal problem, but we are an overstimulated society. The ability to be bored, the comfort of being bored has dramatically dropped to where you can't go take a shit without taking your phone with you. You can't, um, unfortunately watch dumbass Hulu, which you pay a lot for, but it still has ads. And when the ads come on, you go back on your phone. So, I mean, 
just a couple examples, but I've talked about it over the last few months and it still holds true. I don't go to sleep with earbuds every night anymore. I think I've probably cut it down by at least half or most nights, even if I plan on listening to some sort of comedy album. Cause I like, I fall asleep listening to like comedy. I like, I like listening to stand up albums. Um, you know, I'll listen to music and news during the day, but even the news I've, I've cut back, uh, the last month. It's been nice not having to constantly follow a chaotic president or something like that. It's just, you know, is our democracy going to be okay? You know, a couple of other things that kind of matter, but frankly, it is depressing. Even if it's real, it is depressing. And, um, even if it's only like 80 or 90% true and the rest is maybe just, you know, and I'm talking about straight journalism here. I'm talking about independent outlets um, where they're mostly speaking fact. And then, of course, partially probably playing the game to get ratings and get views and get clicks and subscribers. Um, I get it. It's a business. Um, but it's also making people cynical. But I do not lump independent media in with corporate media. Um, but anyway, I've been working to scale back on that and just generally not... Um, fall into that trap of feeling like I got to be plugged into everything all the time, just be okay with being bored. Uh, because that's where the create that's where the creativity comes out. And then that's where kind of like you facing your own demons and figuring things out helps because if you're just letting your brain go wild all the time, stimuli and all, then in the short term, it just kind of saps your energy in some ways, but I don't even want to know what it does in the long term. Like, I think I've read some stuff about where, like, if your brain is just exhausted or it didn't get enough sleep over the years, your ability to get, like, dementia or Alzheimer's early on is much higher. And those are just a few, like, possible consequences. I don't even know a lot of even more, but just, I was like, yeah, no, no, no wonder people's anxiety and other things are through the roof. It's not just because we know more about mental health and illness, but like we're just constantly stimulated to the point where I tried to do like a dopamine fast one day where like I literally was just bored all day. Like I forced myself to be bored all day. I did this last year during the pandemic and I made it most of the day, but then around nine o'clock at night I ate food and I basically caught up on all the news. So I couldn't even make it a full day. Like, it proves that this shit is an addiction. And, you know, at least with me, when I hear addiction, I just think of, like, heroin, needle, you know, you're in a ditch somewhere, you're sucking dick for crack, like, you know, all the worst parts of addiction, like, you know, the extreme examples. Um, but addiction can be what appears to be harmless stuff on the sub- on the surface, too. You know, you can be addicted to your smartphone. You can be addicted to social media. You can be addicted to internet pornography. Like, all that stuff is designed to do that to you. And if you don't actually have a full grip on being able to say no to it, and you can't compulsively go back to that thing, then guess what, mister? You got a little, at least a little bit of an addiction going on. And maybe you don't have an addictive personality. Maybe you don't get addicted to substances like alcohol or uh, weed or gambling or stuff like that, but tech companies and, um, yeah, other companies have figured out how to, uh, manipulate the human brain and keep us glued to our screens at all times to the point where people like me (laughs) feel the need to make a goddamn podcast that gets two views every week. Um, thanks to all my new listeners and subscribers, by the way. Um, but at any rate, that's what I've got going on. You know, again, it's June 7th. I'm just working on getting my house in order, getting my life in order and making it so that when we get to our new house, single story, single income home where I'm going to be making the bacon and, you know, dealing with more pressure, but I'm making it to where the pressure creates a diamond instead of breaking the pipes or something like that. So thanks for listening. Uh, Thanks for any support. And if any of this resonates with you, let me know, you know, in the comments or whatever. These podcasts are just on YouTube right now. So 
yeah, enjoy. And if you haven't, listen to Amir. They're uh, a fun band. Yo, what's up? This is the Jay Dennis Podcast for Tuesday, June 8th, 2021 actually recording this on Tuesday evening. I was like, oh shit, I gotta record a podcast. I've been kind of going full steam ahead this month with uh, trying to close out my fiscal year on a high note. Um, I had a massive February, but the last few months have been a little slow, so I'm definitely due for another big month, and I'm trying to lay the groundwork to where I can have more consistency and not have these peaks and valleys. Um, You know, at the ripe young age of 30, compared to where I was in my early and mid-20s, I'm making significantly more money than I used to, um, but it's all commission, and it's much better when there's more consistency, um, which is what I would rather have. I'd rather have, you know, consistency and predictability rather than peaks and valleys. But that's part of what kind of that's part of what comes with the territory, uh, depending on the nature of your business. But anyway, so I've been really busy with that in a good way talking to clients, letting people know that I'm leaving, you know, moving, but I'm still retaining all my clients up here and everything's all good. Um, I have been on such, actually before I get to my Amir kick, (laughs) you know, that's kind of the band that got me to start doing ranked and reviews again, starting last year, last summer was their hindsight album. And then I started doing a bunch of these, these videos so I've just been listening to them a bunch lately, all eight of their albums, and I'm just having so much fun with it. And I'm like, even when I listen to like my least favorite album from them, um, which, you know, if you haven't seen the video, my least favorite albums, my bottom ranked ones are uh, Eternal Enemies and Speaker of the Dead, which might sound surprising, like, whoa, those are kind of their more popular albums. I'm a bigger fan of their newest material and uh, Goodbye to the Gallows. Um, but, you know, when I listen to any of their albums, I enjoy it. I think Amir might be in my top ten favorite bands now. Um, they've gone from Guilty Pleasure to just straight up a band I enjoy listening to. Um, in terms of, like, the modern-day Limp Bizkit, I, I say that in the sense where they're kind of just shamely, shamelessly themselves. And, um, you know, vocalist is a little polarizing. I mean, they don't sound like Limp Bizkit. They got a little bit of new metal elements to them, but when I say modern day, I just mean like a guilty pleasure band that's fun as fuck to listen to, and I have no issue saying they're one of my favorite bands. My favorite band doesn't have to be technically difficult to play or extremely, like, hard, if if, if I said that right. If I want technicality and uh, difficult playing, I'll listen to one of my other favorite bands, like Megadeth or Architects in Flames. Um, if I want the catchy shit, I'm going to Limp Biscuit, I'm your, uh, Corn, Lincoln Park, you know, other bands I really enjoy, uh, Sum 41, Trivium. I think I just listed off my top 10 bands right there if I missed one. Actually, let me pull up my list. Let me just tell you what my top 10 favorite bands are. Let's have a look see. When's the last time I freaking looked on at this? 10 favorite bands. Uh... Limp Biscuit, Sum 41, Architects, Corn, Trivium, Lincoln Park, Megadeth, Papa Roach, Kill Switch Engage, and In Flames. I might replace Kill Switch Engage with. Or I might, yeah, I might replace Kill Switch or In Flames with a mirror. I don't know which one. Uh, I probably think In Flames is slightly better than Kill Switch, but Kill Switch was a massive band for me growing up, so it's hard, it's hard for me to put them to the side. But, like, even though Lincoln Park's one of my all time favorite bands, I don't listen to them that often, but I did listen to Hybrid Theory recently. Um, But I know for damn sure Limp Bizkit, Sum 41, Architects, and Korn are there. Megadeth is there. I think Megadeth is the top of the uh, big four thrash metal bands. So I've been on a pretty big kick with that recently. And if I could just give a little bit of commentary on each of their albums. um, Let's see. Goodbye to the Gallows and Respect Issue are very easy to listen to from start to finish. Very heavy, hard-hitting, drop-A-sharp albums that just sound evil and are great. Felony is kind of a weird, raw uh, median between their oldest material and what would be more prevalent in albums like Speaker of the Dead or maybe Slave to the Game. But Felony's got like a unique identity to it, and it's got a couple tracks on there I really enjoy. 
So Felony's pretty great. Uh, Speaker of the Dead, I think, is a little overrated, but it's still got a handful of solid tracks on there that got me into the band in the first place. Uh, Slave to the Game is the album that's the easiest to listen to from start to finish. It's their most consistent album, but the standout tracks aren't as high as some of their other albums, so it's not my favorite album. Uh, Eternal Enemies, much like Speaker of the Dead, has a handful of solid tracks, but just a couple others that kind of weigh it down. Frankie's vocal performance is a teeny bit hit or miss, but a lot like my other ranked and reviews, it's not a huge disparity between my least favorite and their most favorite albums or what have you. But it's look at yourself and then, of course, hindsight, where I think they went to the next level. You know, Joshua Travis on, on the guitar, sounding incredible. Frankie really fitting into the pocket vocally and sounding like he knows what he's doing and having a good time. Uh, look at yourself was a great comeback album and hindsight's just the icing on the cake the the further fun catchiness and heaviness all at the same time and then of course songs like thunder mouth like and uh uncontrollable descent are like amir's best songs best songs holy shit so that's my quick recap of amir i've just been listening to their eight albums enjoying myself i should probably go listen to their uh their ep also but you know but yeah, go, go check out my Rankton Reviewed on Amir. Um, and be sure to check out the rest of my Rankton Reviewed also. I'm going to get back to them at some point. I've just been taking care of some other stuff right now. But yeah, as I've been progressing in this life, I like to think about if I took today's mindset and today's knowledge that I have about communication and relationships and social dynamics and everything, what would happen if I applied it to places I was at in the past? <laughs> so I used to work at Disney. I worked at Disney for like five years you know, spread out over two separate, uh, periods of employment. Um, I ultimately ended up quitting cause I just hit a ceiling there and my challenging and sometimes difficult personality does not fit into their mold because I do not like being told what to do. I am not a compliant person. And unless there's a pandemic, I am not a rule follower. So that does not, uh, that does not mesh well with Disney's, uh, standards or their culture for the most part. So, I, what I like to do is I like to pretend what I've learned with sales and questioning and language. How would I handle a job interview? Now, what I've interviewed for a few years ago, um, at my current position and hopefully my very, my last one, um, I'll never have to do this again. Um, but based on what I know about questioning language, framing of questions, um, and sometimes ways that I've seen people, interviewees, take control of the interview and answer questions a certain way. I'd like to see how I can handle some of your basic questions that, like, I probably bombed back then. I probably always thought that certain interview questions were shit. Like, for the most part, I, I mostly got jobs because I was persistent. And um, it wasn't because of my application or the questionnaire it was because i went in and talked to the manager directly that's just how i've always been i've always been a very driven go straight to the source kind of person and if i did that more in my sales career i'd be a millionaire by now so i need to work on that but i like to think if i were asked certain questions from certain companies that i would challenge the interviewer or i would um answer the question a certain way you know honestly but then i would maybe take control of the framing and then ask them a follow-up question and not like does that make sense or is that a good answer i wouldn't say anything like that I, I wouldn't be insecure or uncertain i'd be confident and i'd probably do everything i could to control the interview i would want to interview the inter interviewer and basically make it like actually i'm interviewing you for this job not you're interviewing me for this position so it would just be an exercise it's not that i'm looking for anything new it's like it's just something i'd want to do for fun uh, you know, just to uh, get my feet wet and just kind of fuck around. Because um, I've had my time wasted. I, I don't feel guilty about going and wasting other people's time. I've had my time wasted plenty of times. So that might sound immature or uh, petty, but um, just kind of give back, kind of give that like little bit of pushback and outside of interviews, but generally when I talk to people on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's uh, personal tasks on the phone or getting things completed around the house or calling a customer service about something. Uh, I try to be, when I talk to people, I try to be one of the highlights of their day and in a good way. 
I like to be interesting to people and I like to uh, be funny. And that's just that's just who I am and how I am. I like to leave an impression on people. Like I don't like to be boring and forgettable. It's just not in my nature. Uh, and I feel like that's who I've always been for the most part. Um, you know, I've had people ask me, it's like, dude, why'd you say that to that person? I'm like, what? I didn't offend them. I didn't mock them or insult them. I just, sometimes I just like to be a little bit goofy or, you know, I, I like to just be funny. I like to be the interesting part of somebody's day. And honestly, it makes my day better too. Instead of having all these robotic conversations and robotic exchanges with people, I like to make it a little bit fun. It gives me life. It gives me hope and happiness. And I like to think that sometimes the dividends pass on the to other people and they feel like maybe their day got a little bit better. So that's kind of my goal when I go out in the world is I want to be kind of the bright spot of people's day. And whether it's through my music or my podcast or whatever points I make and they resonate with you, that's ultimately what I want to do in this world. I want to do good. And um, whether it's big or small, of course, I'm not a politician or anything, but legacy is important to me, you know? Which is why if I was hit by a car tomorrow, my financial legacy would uh, have my loved ones taken care of for years to come. So, but as for other things like my media and uh, music and everything, I just want people to know what I wanted to leave on this world. And even though I don't plan on dying anytime soon, that's why I, in the very near future, intend on putting out solid new content, creating incredible new music, and listening to bands like Amir or other bands I love, Some 41, Trivium, uh, Megadeth, Linkin Park, Architects, etc., Papa Roach. Um, all give me great inspiration, but then, of course, I inject my own uh, feelings into it. I just need to get better at the lyricism, and um, I feel like the lyrics come to me more when I'm more consistent with my meditation and my journaling and my personal therapy. So again, if any of that resonates with you, great. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, listen to the other podcast episodes. I do this to vent and kind of get control and perspective of everything I got going on because sometimes my brain goes like a thousand miles an hour. But for the most part, I do my best to stay grounded, center, and uh, have a great fucking day. Yo, what's up? It's Friday, June 11th, 2021. Uh, One in the afternoon. I have a pretty light work day today, so I'm taking care of a bunch of uh, stuff around the house, packing, tying up some loose ends because we are moving in 10 days. And uh, my wife just kind of unloaded on me last night uh, what needs to be accomplished. And while she's gone during the last week, what I need to do, and you know, a large part of me already knows a lot of this stuff, but because she's better at planning ahead than I am, there were a couple things I hadn't considered, so it kind of just hit me like a frickin' tsunami, all the shit I have to do and everything, and I'm like, if I just wake up early, don't get the itis, uh, and I'm somewhat efficient, I can still take care of everything, make this a smooth move, and have plenty of time to get, uh, <laughs> S rankings on all the, uh, Resident Evil 8 Village Mercenaries levels, because <laughs> that's what I've been doing. But this is what's been going on the past few days. After I had a couple friends over last Saturday for my birthday, uh, one of them bought over a couple six-packs, but uh, I'm not a heavy drinker, so I was just like, dude, take some of this home with you, because I only had like three, and uh, yeah, there wasn't, just a sh- there wasn't a shit ton of drinking going on, so there were some leftovers. I'm like, look, I'll keep some of these. If you want to take some home with you, I'm not going to drink all this. And he's like, all right. So I had like five beers left in my fridge. And for roughly the last four to five days, I've had like a beer a night, which again, I don't normally do. I don't usually drink every night. If anything, it's like weekly. Um, but the depressants really kicked in, man. Like I got really sluggish and uh, kind of fell off my my high horse, not my sanctimonious high horse, but like my feeling like I'm riding high, like flying high. Like I fell off cloud nine or whatever the fucking expression is. But I was like, oh yeah, maybe I should uh, quit drinking for a few days. Um, and yeah, I didn't do that yesterday. I ended up having a much more energetic day 
and uh, yeah, I'm looking to do that over the weekend as well, and over the last week while my wife is uh, out, and when she comes back, we're going to do the move, so like I said on the last podcast, um, Amur and their eight albums have been a huge uh, soundtrack to this last month. I've had a Slave to the Game playing in my car a whole bunch lately. Some uh, Speaker of the Dead, um, Eternal Enemies. And like yesterday when I was jogging and working out, I was listening to uh, The Respect Issue. I was listening to Goodbye to the Gallows while I was doing some yard work. Um, same thing with Hindsight. Uh, when I was cooking dog food, I was listening to uh, Look at Yourself. So, I mean, am I missing any there? Felony? listening to Felony, so I think I just rattled off all eight there, but I was just like, I need to stop drinking beer, and uh, I need to stay hydrated, dude, what the fuck, am I going to miss this green light, dude, this is the worst, when you can't get into the turning lanes, because you're like, you can't, you just can't like squeeze in there, oof, so yeah, I'm a little sluggish right now, my throat's a little bit dry, I ran out of, uh, ran out of LaCroix, but um, something I was thinking about while I was driving, because I had to head to he- I had to <laughs> head to Best Buy <laughs> to uh, buy a spare battery for something, and I was like thinking about what I used to do. Where Best Buy has this thing where it has an entrance and an exit; you can't just go in and out any door. And there's like that weird yellow shirt security guy who stands there. He's obviously like. Um, loss prevention or something but anytime you tried to head for the wrong door to exit even though it clearly says on the door do not exit it's, you're supposed to go to the other one you'd be like whoa, whoa, whoa this way and there was a time or two where I'd, I'd try to fuck with them and this was years ago maybe like I don't know seven to eight nine years ago in my early 20s where I try to fuck with them and just be like huh? But like the, either the door wouldn't open if you faced, you know, you went for the wrong one. You'd, you'd look like an idiot in front of the guy, or just you know whatever. But there's just little things that I've been kind of reflecting on where I was like, you know, I used to think that shit like that was stupid. I used to be like, they're just trying to control you like cattle. And it's like, well, if there's a loss prevention person there. It's probably easier for them to monitor people going the same direction in the, in either door, so that that way they don't have to keep their head on the swivel as much. It makes their job a little bit easier to kind of maintain the flow of traffic, I guess. So my mature 30 year old brain was like, yeah, maybe it was kind of immature of me back then in my early 20s to act a fool, but I do that a lot. I get reflective about <sighs> shit. Excuse me. <laughs> I get reflective about shit that I used to find uh, petty or stupid. And I'm not going to beat myself up over the past and go like, oh yeah, it was stupid that I pulled pranks or that I threw a a half-eaten cake onto somebody's fucking windshield. (laughs) My friends and I, this was like 10 years ago, so we're past the statute of limitations. My friends and I, or it might have been in high school actually, so it might have been more like uh, 12 or 13 years ago at this point. (laughs) My friends and I were walking around an apartment complex and um, I don't know why we had a birthday cake, but it was like half eaten. We're like, we don't want this anymore. What do we do with it? <laughs> and if I forgot if it was me, or it probably wasn't me because I was still a little bit of a good lad or uh, somebody else. But <laughs> he just took the lid off. And he's like, I don't know whose car this is, but he just threw it. And it, <laughs> icing down on the hood of the car, not the windshield, but like the hood. And this was like late at night. So we were like... Whoever's going to wake up to that, enjoy. <laughs> I told my wife about that, and she's like, what a dick move. And I was just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, stuff like that I don't get I don't get hung up on. But, like, I used to get really annoyed by, like, bikers. And I know that it's kind of in vogue right now to hate, uh, not bikers, cyclists, people who ride their bikes. I used to think that in Central Florida, even if there was a bike lane, which they're not very common, actually, if there was a biker on the road or whatever, I'd get annoyed because I'd be like, eh, I have to drive around you a little bit. Use the sidewalk, even though the sidewalk's technically for pedestrians. Eh. So I probably annoyed some of my friends with those annoying annoyances, but we all got shit that annoys us that was probably not rational and probably annoyed to the people. But over time, I've learned to kind of let go a lot of these ill-founded grievances that don't make sense and aren't really grounded in logic. 
And I've just been kind of been reflective about stuff like that. And I just think, you know, from the age of 20 to 30, a lot of life can happen and a lot of growth can happen. And I'm by no means done. You know, we'll see how much better I am between 30 and 40. My goal is to actually be a millionaire in the next 10 years. And um, I have achieved some pretty, pretty damn good financial goals so far by the age of 30. And of course, my knowledge by this age is pretty solid too. Um, so I like to think I'm kind of ahead of the curve with a few things. Um, but at any rate, that's, that's kind of what got me, uh, Jonesing to do a podcast. Um, trying to think of what else is going on. Oh yeah. I just saw that the, uh, I guess the department of justice under Merrick Garland is going to do what they can and use their, use their muscle to help protect voting rights. Um, which is good because a lot of these restrictive voter bills that are passing in states that are trending blue. Um, I, I wouldn't say Florida's trending blue, but Florida has the potential to, to be blue. It's just Republican dominated right now. And you got a bunch of people there that are susceptible to conspiracy theory. Um, but Florida's still technically a swing state. I don't care what Farron Cousin says. I love you and you're right about a lot of stuff, but you know, I'm a Floridian too. Uh, or was I was a Floridian, but I still think Florida has the capability to be a swing state. It's just not as easy as it was back in the Obama days. But anyway, um, yeah, all these places like Georgia, Florida, Texas, uh, probably a couple of other states passing these restrictive bills. Um, a lot of these bills can be challenged in court, and you know, civil rights groups and voting groups can do what they want to do to uh, challenge it, prove it unconstitutional, un-American, stuff like that. But the the Justice Department, under good leadership, is uh, stepping in to make a good decision here, then that's kind of of a good sign. Because I'm of the I'm of the belief that if you love your country, or if you love something, you can criticize it and demand it to be better. I'm not in a cultish mindset where I just blindly love or hate something. Like, you know, when people say if you hate this country, you can get out. That's not a. That's not. A, that's not a, an argument. There's. That's one of the dumbest things you can say. Honestly, there's nothing behind that statement. It's a nothing statement. Not a nothing burger, which is another stupid expression. It's a nothing statement. Kind of like it is what it is. It's a nothing statement. Have I made it clear? It's a nothing statement. So um. Yeah, I, again, I bring that up because I am pretty cynical and pretty, uh, what do you call it, um, skeptical about our country, even though it's in better hands right now, and a couple of things are getting kind of on the right track, especially the pandemic, but I am discouraged when I see members of my own party, which I can challenge my own party and say that parts of my party suck. I don't like corporate Democrats. They're just basically Republican light. I'm I'm a progressive, so I don't care for these 1980s, 1990s style Democrats that are still uh, in power. It really bothers me that whether it's Mitch McConnell, a senator from Kentucky, or Joe Manchin, a senator from West Virginia, it really bothers me that one senator, regardless of the situation, or depending on the situation, can have that much power. Our Senate is fucking trash. The Senate is where progress goes to die. It's not where bipartisanship happens. It's not where a marketplace of ideas goes and finds the best compromise. No. The entire political system is poisoned and corrupt as long as there's money in politics. Elected officials, for the most, most part do not represent their constituents. They represent their donors. They represent the people that give them the biggest campaign contributions, and it's hard to know who's doing that because of stupid laws like Citizens United and other bullshit campaign contribution or finance laws that are um, opaque and hard to understand and need to be overturned. If If you want to restore people's faith in government, you need to get money out of politics. That is the root cause, the root concern. And then, of course, the next step is to make disinformation and misinformation unfashionable 
and uh, not profitable so that media outlets that cater to corrupt politicians and, you know, basically manufacture consent um, don't do that either. And it's funny because a lot of you guys that might listen to this that are Republicans, we're going to agree with this. We're going to agree that there's a lot of corruption in the United States. There's a lot of corruption in corporate media. But it's just generally where is the blame pointed and not who's the lesser of the evils, but who are the people in power that are actually trying to do something to help. So that's my take on that. Uh, Enjoy the rest of the podcast otherwise. Yo, what's up? It's uh, Wednesday, June 16th, 2021, 7.20 in the evening. Uh, It's actually still light outside, so as soon as I finish this podcast clip, I think I'm going to go for a jog. The last couple days I've been pretty good about actually getting my mile in and doing a home workout. We are less than five days out from officially moving, which is exciting. It's a whole different thing. You'll have to share them with me. Sorry, uh, my neighbor just texted me. Um, Yeah, in five days we're moving. My wife is out of town visiting some family. So we spent the last weekend doing a shit ton of packing so that she didn't leave me with too, too much. But I spent the last couple days just fucking killing it. She said this, you know, these last, this last week is my chance to tie up any loose ends, you know, take care of some personal errands that are for me and her. Herky, that's old water, dude. (laughs) My dog was drinking old ass water. Come here, drink this water. Anyway, um, and today in particular, you know, Wednesday, I did a bunch of solid work-related stuff. Um, One of the tough parts about my job is following up with people and actually, you know, designing cases or ideas or plans and, you know, just doing the follow-through and actually getting help on designing solutions so that when the time comes to present or what have you, they're actually excited and they put in an application and I get paid. Um... But these last couple of weeks, I've met with some certainly higher profile people that are doing pretty well for themselves. And also this week, meaning like tomorrow and Friday, I should be closing on some stuff that's been in the works for like weeks and months. I, you know, I, again, I had a massive February, but then fucking March, April and June were a little slow or March, April and May were a little slow. So I was anticipating June being incredibly big. (laughs) It's just going to probably be a little bit of a photo finish where it won't be the last day of the month where everything hits, but it'll certainly not be the beginning. You know, we're just past the halfway mark, but a lot of this stuff is materializing. And um, I think it's all going to come to a head and pay off. And by the time we're in our new home and getting settled in, I'll have just had a mountain of a payday that could certainly get us through a little while as I establish a much more consistent business from my new and improved home office because with my new house, I'm actually going to have a dedicated workspace. You know, working from home the past year, I've just been like working in a common area, not having the most professional setup. And it it, it does affect your work. It affects, excuse me, your productivity. And you know, Having to go up the stairs every five to ten fucking minutes to go somewhere else in the house, it's exhausting. So we're going to be in a one-story house. It's going to be so much easier to navigate through. It's smaller, so it's less stuff to manage. It's easier to clean. We're downsizing. We're keeping shit simple. It's going to be easier on everybody. And most importantly, me. (laughs) Nah. But what's been my soundtrack? Um... As I probably already announced earlier on the podcast, because I think this is just going to be a June podcast at this point, um, I have some ranked and reviewed videos in the works. Um, Again, I probably already announced them at the top of the podcast, but here's me in real time on the 16th sharing what's been happening. I just finished to Bring Me the Horizon one. I just need to actually make the video, but I've already done the ranking and recorded it. Um, 
And then as of today, if you know, a few days later, I just finished one for Blink-182. So been listening to Bring Me the Horizon, you know, there's seven albums and then Blink-182, technically there are eight studio albums, even though their last one is called Nine because they, they, they think they've done nine, but technically their first album is just a more polished version of their demo. So sure, they can, it's their band. They can say they've done nine albums, but technically they've done eight studio albums and one amazing EP that I went back and re-listened to. So I got those. I'm trying to determine if, let me take a look here. Let's take a look at my list of bands I want to do. Let's see, Rise Against, Stone Sour, Dillinger Escape Plan, uh, Green Day. There's more, I'm just not reading all of them. Memphis May Fire, Atreyu, Lamb of God. Yeah, I have like 20 other bands here. But I think the next band I'm going to do will either be... um, It's either going to be Green Day, you know, if I'm going to just stay on the whole pop punk, punk rock thing that I've been on. Or I might just say fuck it and uh, do uh, Lamb of God or something. I was thinking of doing Dillinger Escape Plan, um, but I might do Lamb of God. I kind of want to keep the variation up because, again, I just did Bring Me the Horizon, then Blink-182. They're different genres, so I kind of want to mix it up as I go. And uh, I think if I chug out you know another 10 ranked and reviewed videos i'm going to easily get to like another a couple hundred subscribers maybe i've had a slow and steady growth this past year and it's been pretty cool um but of course outside of that i'm mostly still listening to amir their eight albums while i you know i jog and i um i work out at home so i'm trying to make sure that this latter half of june as busy crazy as this month has been with work and with transitioning into a new home packing and everything the good news is we don't have to pack every single gd thing in this house um but we put a pretty solid dent in it and i've just been killing it the past couple days i've also been playing quite a bit of uh, mercenaries on resident evil 8 village i also Kind of did something I regret, but not really. It's only twenty five bucks. Um, I own a, I own a Wii. I could have just gone to like any old retro game store, probably, and just bought Dark Side Chronicles and Umbrella Chronicles. You know those Resident Evil games from the mid to late two thousands that are technically rail shooters, and just had the whole motion controller experience with that, but. I thought the PlayStation store for the PS3 was going to be closing, so I bought a bundled version of that for the PS3, but instead of using a motion controller... Herky, why do you keep chewing your ass? Um, sorry. It's okay, buddy. Um, I, yeah, I bought, it for, I bought a bundled thing for the ps3 thinking that the ps3 store was going to be gone but it looks like it's still going to be around for a while but i also bought the original silent hill and final fantasy 6 you know just fuck it um so i guess i'll play that rail shooter with just a regular controller once i'm settled into my new house um and kind of enjoy myself because you know i'm trying to make it to where i make a shit ton of money here in the next couple weeks and then I can actually take a little bit of a break in July, like a week or two off and just enjoy myself for a while because I take like periodic breaks during the week. I've, I haven't actually taken like a full week or week or two off in a while. Um, and it's hard for me to do it because if I have cases and underwriting or something, I have to, you know, occasionally at least like every couple of days or once a week, like give a client an update. But like, it's like mostly a vacation, but whatever. Um, and then I can use that time to dig into some new Resident Evil games I've never played before. Turns out Resident Evil is pretty much my all-time favorite series. I've basically played and beaten all the mainline games. I Not even basically, I have. Um, except for the original. I don't have a desire to go back and beat the original PlayStation 1 version. It's too clunky and too buggy. 
I've beaten the remake, and I think that's good enough. I've beaten, yep, I've beaten the the original remake. I've beaten zero. I've beaten the original two, the two remake, the original three, three the three remake. Of uh, I've, beat, I've beaten four like seven hundred times. Beaten five, beaten six, beaten seven, and I've just beaten eight. So, Resident Evil is definitely my favorite series, probably. With its ups and downs, I still think it's a solid series. Um, and now I'm just kind of playing some of the spinoffs. You know, I've beaten Revelations 1 and 2. There's some games I'm never going to play, though. Like the shit ones, like Umbrella Core or uh, Operation Raccoon City, whatever it's called. I'm not going to play those. They, they, they fucking suck. Uh, I'm not going to waste my money on those. Um, but I've heard good things about the rail shooters, the Dark Side Chronicles and Umbrella Chronicles, so I'm excited to play those, even if it's not the full experience. But if it's bad enough... With a PS3 controller, I'll try to get, I'll try to find it for the Wii, and uh, we're gonna have a much bigger TV and a new entertainment center set up in our new house, so we can actually I can actually enjoy the gaming and TV experience in our new living room. And the good news is, all this is pretty damn low cost. Like our mortgage was on the very much low end of our range of of, of acceptable uh, you know mortgage or monthly payments, so. I'm trying to heed my own advice that I give clients with regards to living within means and uh, not spending what you don't have, which, by the way, uh, systematically or systemically, that, that, that's not why a whole generation of people are poor. It's not because they're living above their means. It's because the means aren't being provided to them. So I don't condemn people for having to pay bills with credit cards or do other things. Like It's, it, it's difficult out there. So I'm, I'm trying to do my part to help people and lead by example. Um, but yeah, starting out, you know, our first real house, you know, all of our first real stuff, um, it's going to be very much, not a shoestring budget, but it's going to be pretty lean to the point where if we have emergencies or if we want to go do something nice from time to time, we could easily afford it. But I'm still not in a position comfortably to where I can say, yeah, I'm not going to buy the $2 soap anymore. I'm going to buy the $5 organic soap. Like, it's just, you know, not there yet. There's a few bathroom products where I don't buy the cheap shit anymore. And there's still some food where, you know, I'll pay a little bit extra for, like, higher quality for health purposes. But for the most part, I have a pretty lean budget, and that's why I'm not hemorrhaging money at this point. But anyway, enjoy the rest of the podcast. I'm going to go for a jog. Thanks for listening. Yo, it's Saturday, June 19th, 2021, about 8 in the morning. If I'm not mistaken, is it, is it Juneteenth, which is now a federal holiday? Well, that's just that's just awesome. And I'm not saying that, uh, I'm not saying that tongue-in-cheek. I'm, like, legitimately saying that's, that, that's fantastic. Like, when was the last time we created a federal holiday over anything? Look, I just, I don't know the whole context about what happened on this day. I know there was some sort of massacre, there were racial implications, and some Republicans are pissed about it, so that must mean we're doing the right thing. So, <laughs> um, so that's great. Um, it just kind of bothers me, and this has something to do with Juneteenth. It just bothers me when we kind of do some basic, easy stuff, we make a big deal about it, but we, the, you know, our government still can't pass real legislation that affects everybody tangibly in a good way, and our intelligence continues to be insulted by corporate news media outlets, and uh, these bought and paid for moderate Democrats and Republican politicians that their whole brand is I'm bipartisan but it's completely written in stone completely written in stone that there's no such thing nobody gives a shit about that anymore the bipartisanship that doesn't exist in Washington 0% exists if you translate it into a constituent bipartisanship of support of certain policy ideas and this is why people's faith and the government is super low. I mean, that's one of the reasons. But anyway, so yeah, it's about 8 in the morning. I'm heading over to Walmart um, for my last Walmart trip of 
my time living up here because in just two short days, two short days, we're going to be actually moving down to Vegas. Our house is ready. Our house is, our current house is mostly packed up. I've just been fucking killing it this week while my wife is off visiting family and needing a much needed break. I've been tying up loose ends, closing sales, cleaning the house, packing it up, and uh, actually exercising. (laughs) Um, I shouldn't make a big deal about this, but it, it is a big deal for me. I... I hadn't gotten like a I hadn't gotten a tetanus shot in like at least 15 years. I don't know what it was, but even though my mom's been in the medical field for years, I, I guess I just wasn't taught how to uh, stay on top of my records or how to stay on top of my health insurance or um, annual checkups or vaccines or anything like that. Um, so I hadn't, it had never occurred to me to go get a tetanus shot, you know, and during some of those years I was throwing around some pretty rusty weight, but as far as I know, I never caught it. It's a, it's an extremely rare, but very debilitating disease. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad I never caught it, but like I've been fucking around with like rusty tools and dirt and a couple of other things the past month. And I'm just like, it's like, all right, dude, you just got your COVID vaccine rather recently. Let's get the, let's get the tetanus in June. And, uh, so yeah, I went and got it. It was easy. I always tell the nurse or the tech or whoever's administering the vaccine, I always tell them be gentle (laughs) because I don't want to get one of those people that just like jab it in your arm. It's like, fuck that. Um, I was like, I'm going to get it on a Thursday so that by the time we're lifting and packing everything Sunday, my arm probably won't be sore anymore. Oddly enough, my arm wasn't sore at all that day. It really wasn't sore most of yesterday. It got a little sore in the evening. And then it's still a little sore this morning. But it's not debilitating at all. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. So, I'm just over here talking about yet another vaccine. But I'm not a big fan of needles. I don't know how the fuck I got a tattoo. Um, probably because I couldn't really watch it happen. Because it's... It's behind, it's, it's, it's behind my arm. So it's kind of, I mean, you could look, I could look, like look over and watch him do it, but like, it just, you know, it, it's on my, it's on my tricep. So like I couldn't exactly watch the needle hit the skin, but anyway, maybe I wasn't as woozy back then when I was 20. Um, but no, it's, it, it, it's a big deal for me personally that in the past year, rather the past eight months, I could get a flu shot. COVID vaccine and a tetanus shot. Look at me telling you my immunization records. Um, but yeah, no, so I'm just going to Walmart. Uh, I'm not buying two weeks worth of dog food. I'm only buying one because there's no sense in having to travel or transport down that much, uh, perishable stuff. I've been trying to run the fridge dry. I was pissed because Two nights ago, I went to Del Taco. Last night, I wanted to go to Jack in the Box and get their fries, but for some odd reason, their drive-thru was closed. No sign, no anything, just a bunch of chairs stacked up at the entrance of the drive-thru. And, um, so I ended up having to go to Taco Bell. I was like, I don't want to eat fucking tacos two nights in a row. And, I mean, tacos are like my favorite food, so I really shouldn't care, but I was craving something else. But, whatever. Um... Is this place bumping right now? All right, I'm going to have to be in and fucking out, man. All right, this clip went by faster than I expected, so I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, where was I? I just I just left. It was about a 20-minute run. It was a little busy. I was probably one of maybe 10% of people in there that was wearing a mask, but Whatever. I'm, I've been at a point now where I'm really not judging people as much. You know, it's certainly a hard thing to, uh, be done with or move past when you've been doing it for a year. But what also gets me 
is just how insensitive people can be with regards to this didn't happen to me I think I give off an aura of don't fuck with me not that I'm walking around with machismo or anything but I just I have a don't fuck with me look when I'm out in public even though I'm a happy guy um as I was saying it just really pisses me off that there are people out there harassing people who still wear masks it's like our man Joey B said if people still choose to wear masks just be kind leave them alone like you don't know what they got going on it is completely different to harass somebody for still wearing a mask as vaccines are destroying this pandemic it is completely different to harass somebody for wearing a mask than it, than it was during the heat of the pandemic when vaccines weren't available to call out somebody for not wearing one. Or when people during the heat of the pandemic would go into places not wearing one and harass people who were wearing them. It's, it's, it, it's not really the situation that's going on. It's just the type of people that we're dealing with. The type of people that we're dealing with are the ones that have been on the wrong side of every single instance or action of this entire thing whether it had to do with testing whether it had to do with social distancing wearing a mask being safe giving a shit about other people giving a shit about their own family uh getting the vaccine (laughs) not voting for an insurrectionist statistically (laughs) anyway so it's nice to be on our way out from this it's just I think I, t- I think I told my wife, and again, it's, you know, we're mainly wearing it for each other still, um, but I was like, if things continue in the correct direction, and they somehow make additional breakthroughs with vaccination rates, or figuring out how to curb current or future variants, or like diseases, viruses, what have you, uh, I'll probably be wearing it until July. Um, but like, once I get to my new home on Monday morning, um, I'm going to get up early and go to the nearest, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of a, of a chain and I can go into any location around the country. Um, but I think the closest one to my new house is about 10 minutes away which is nice because originally we thought it was like 25 minutes. I'm like, there's no way there has to be one closer They're They're known for being everywhere. Um, and I'm locked in at a solid price, so I don't pay any gimmicky bullshit. Um, I think I'm going to go in early in the morning and see if it's dead. And then starting late June, early July, I might start resuming my, my gym membership and actually going and depending on how busy it is I'm probably not going to do cardio in there I'll probably just run around my block a few times um, or my neighborhood but if I'm doing some heavy weight lifting or just you know whatever I'm probably still going to wear a mask in there but if there's like too many people in there breathing heavily then I might wait until it's a little slower or until, again, whatever city I'm in or whatever is that much closer to herd immunity. Fortunately, throughout all of this, I have, I I live in a swing state, but it's voted blue the last two elections. (laughs) It's voted blue the last two elections in the the, the, the two major cities that I've lived in in this state, um, of course, are predominantly liberal. And I only bring that up because we've politicized science. We've politicized medicine and liberals are more likely to get the vaccine. They are. End of story. We're the fucking ones that got us out of the pandemic after you motherfuckers kept us in it for over a year. Fuck you. Thanks for all the massive inconveniences in life the past year. Thanks for keeping me from seeing my family. Thanks for making me paranoid about my health and my safety and my family. 
thank you for disregarding science and disregarding people who actually put their life's work into stopping the spread of deadly diseases. Go fuck yourself. And it's because of us. It's because of us and our efforts that we're getting out of this. Not because of you, you selfish cocksucking cockroach. 